Welcome to the channel. My name is Gary and this is Weakest of Weeks. So a lot of my videos encompass my sobs and other random how-to stuff. Well today, unfortunately, I broke my Ryobi pole saw. Part number's here somewhere. The P4360. Now I don't know how many different variations of these pole saws there are, but basically I presume this is the one that's still currently for sale in 2020. I've only owned this thing for, I want to say, like six months, barely even used, and I've had some issues with it. So currently it actually does not work. And well, I do have a whole plethora of Ryobi tools, but I actually do have another one hanging right there on the pegboard. But basically, I have not been nice to this thing, so I'm not surprised that it broke. I purchased this used off of Facebook Marketplace last fall end of 2019 used it about twice unfortunately i stored this definitely not the correct way so i had it hanging on my pegboard like this well apparently all of the chain oil in the top here drained out didn't really pay attention too much to it and i went to use it just recently do some landscaping and while it was cutting fantastically it just stopped working so, well, then that's where the other one comes into play. Wife just bought me another one because she didn't think I'd fiddle with this one. So I kind of did a little diagnosing. First, I tried a couple different batteries. It still did not work. I then took the new bottom portion, plugged it in. So basically, this is new. This is the pre-existing old one. It didn't make a difference. So that isolated the issue from this point onwards. So now what I'm going to be doing in this video is tearing this top piece apart and seeing what I can find out. More than likely, I want to say the motor is just done. Probably what happened was this got all dried because, of course, I'm a dummy and let that drain out. Didn't check it. This probably got dry, got hung up with cutting this tiny log and too much effort on the motor and just cooked it. So I'm going to see if I can tear this apart and see what's going on. So I unscrewed the end of it, now we are ready to disassemble. First thing, if you were to disassemble this, obviously you will want to make sure that you don't have any oil in here. Well, that doesn't matter because I already know it drained out. So now what we're going to do, go ahead and take off the 10 mil of the chain guard. Move that. I still have remnants of the branch that killed this thing. Now we are going to remove, I want to say these are T20 torque screws, and if you're not sure what a torque screw is, it's basically a star bit. So there's six torque screws, got those removed, we got a Phillips here. I'm thinking this has to come off, so you should be able to use just a small flathead screwdriver. And work the little spring clip off. Got some trim removal tools from Harbor Freight, real cheap. You can get a set of them. I'm gonna try to stick it in here so I don't mar up the plastic. And actually, it feels like there's some screws right here. Unfortunately, I'm just gonna wreck this little decal. Yep.
Okay. There we go. Whoa. Look at all the crud in there. So there's eight of those longer torque screws. Two, four, six, eight. Two that I didn't initially know that were behind this label that unfortunately I had to destroy to get out. Looks like you don't have to take off the cap, so I guess technically you could leave the fluid in there. This adjuster, the Phillips, you don't need to take out. This Phillips, you do. This with the snap ring, you do not need to take out unless you want to remove this piece right here, which there's an additional two Phillips screws. As far as initial disassembly, just eight Torx screws and one Phillips. So now it's pretty much disassembles it to where we can check out the motor and see if it's good. It's definitely dirty. It freely spins. And then also another thing to check is this mechanism right here, which does freely spin the bearings good. So if you notice, this is kind of like a cam for an engine. So this spins, it's oblonged. So then when you get to the lowest point here, it compresses that, and then it probably shoots a little bit of oil out. Pretty neat. So that all seems to be in fairly working order. Nothing is bound up. It's obviously dirty, but there's no visual signs of anything broken. And like I said, this does freely spin. What I can do is I think I'm going to hook up the base of this with a battery and because these just unplug with basic spade connectors I think I'm going to try to hook up a light or something to this that way it signifies when I pull the trigger it's getting power to here and granted I can also use a multimeter I think my multimeter is broken though so figure out something just because I'm fiddling with this and I don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to use my cheap Chinese knockoff. Go ahead and hook this up like we would if this thing was in full functioning order. Okay, this is hooked up. And we're going to see what happens. Now with it fully assembled, this obviously did not work. So I presume everything back together here the battery in the bottom half i presume this is not going to do anything just as suspected so now what i'm going to be doing is remove these clips and they do make it rather easy for you because on this big giant motor there's a little bit of red here and a little bit of black now, the black could very well be from the soot from this motor, but there is some defining mark for the red. I have these alligator clips, and I have a old Harley light that was a factory light off my former 99 Harley Softail Custom. I'm gonna set that up there. We have our alligator clips, and what we're gonna be doing we ground it to the case because it is a one wire light. So the negative is grounded to the case. The positive goes on the single wire. The negative goes to the negative here. And the positive to the positive spade connector. If it's getting power to this, when we pull the trigger, we know the motor is in fact bad. So let's go ahead and pull the trigger and see what happens. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill out these two rivets. I just drilled out the rivets I had a heck of a time getting this thing off. Actually, what I ended up doing, I didn't get it on camera, but I had it up like this, and I took a dead blow hammer, and I kind of smacked it two or three times on the edges, and it popped this right off. Because the problem I'm having is the rivets I can't fully drill out 
because they're spinning on the inside, I think I'm able to press this tab in here. So there's a tab on each end. Ah, so there is some joints here, at least in the positive. I'm wondering if this mess right here, which before taking off the shrink tube, looks identical to a butt connector. I wonder if this giant lump here is the reason why I'm not getting power. Okay, the goal of this video is to not hurt myself. Interesting. So I was mistaken. That wasn't a butt connector. That was an old school barrel fuse. What in the heck? I wonder how many people thought their pull saw was bad because it's a blown fuse hidden inside this piece right here. I guarantee you we swap this out this thing's gonna work again. That's crazy. Wow, okay. I have an idea to test that this is in fact bad. All right, so we are jumping this fuse portion. We have our light hooked up again. When we pull the trigger, I guarantee you that this light will turn on. Now, We'll swap it after the fuse. I guarantee you that it's not gonna turn on now. How friggin' insane is that? I've honestly never tore apart any of my Ryobi tools and certainly not a pull saw before. And quite honestly, I thought I was gonna be able to fix this before my wife bought another one. And I honestly wish I did tear this apart beforehand so I could fix the stupid fuse and not have to spend another $90 on another one. That's insane, shame on you, Ryobi, what in the heck? I get it, you wanna protect the tool with a little barrel fuse, but come on, something so buried inside of this to where nobody's really ever gonna find that unless they tear it apart completely? That is ridiculous. I'm basically gonna do away with this and just put it all back together and see if it works. I think it's cute that they put a little white coating on here so you can't actually see the fuse blown. So the proper way would probably be to actually research this and replace it appropriately. And it says a E30A forward slash 250VP. So do with that as you see fit. Little disclaimer, I am just gonna solder this guy right up here. Never have to worry about blowing one of these little guys again and stopping the whole operation of this pole saw. Granted, kind of a disclaimer, you do risk putting extra strain and everything on the motor, but at this point, with this little guy blown, you already render the whole pole saw useless. So to me, I have no use for that. So I have my little helping hands from Harbor Freight. Say that 10 times fast. That's gonna hold the wires. I need to strip those back. Add a little flux, solder it up. Bada bing, bada boom, we're done. All right, certainly not the prettiest thing, but it is definitely going to hold. Slap the shrimp tube over top. All right, so that section is repaired nice and sturdy. Now hopefully the length is enough to clear through this tube and to reach the motor. So now we are ready for reassembly. We have all the soldering stuff cleaned up. Downside to just cutting this out and soldering it as is, we did lose three or four inches. So I definitely suggest getting a piece of wire either that length or longer to put in here, but I think 
fingers crossed this is going to be exactly what we need so now we're going to fish this through the section with the two smaller holes those go on the bottom there's a little tab here and a little notch right there Nice satisfying click in place. Here's what I'm talking about with length. Rather short. So before I fully assemble this, we'll see if this is actually long enough. The positive is on the top. Bottom I'm not exactly concerned with. So take two. Embarrassingly enough, you do in fact need to add an extension wire. I thought I'd be able to get away with it, but it was about one inch to maybe a half inch too short. So I added a four or five inch piece of 14 aug wire, and now we are plenty long. So we are ready to reassemble as far as orientation when you clip this back in. Yes, it does matter. There's a notch, it's only gonna go one way. As far as orientation, how this goes, same thing. It's not gonna go this way. Once it finds its home, it clips right in there. Now we're ready for the collar. Collar also only goes one way. Multiple notches on here, but there's one notch bigger and it's gonna lock in to that guy sticking out. So a good tip is that big notch lines up with this label. And obviously you wanna check before you do any final assembly. So I thought I'd be able to rivet this. I ended up drilling out the rest of the original rivets in here. I have some 1 8 rivets, and whenever I use a little rivet gun, there's just not enough meat in there to hold them. You might be able to get away with bigger rivets, but unfortunately that is all I have. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of epoxy of some sort on here, let it sit overnight, make sure everything is aligned, and then we'll be back for final assembly. So it is another day. And another idea so I actually I realized I don't have any epoxy and with everything being on lockdown currently I didn't really feel like going out and I really wanted to use what I had so I kind of went back to my original rivet idea but instead of utilizing the original rivet holes here and here that's just not gonna work it's gonna have too much slop I actually I lowered it and drilled four eighth inch holes on the end cap here that way it will clear everything there won't be any issues. I didn't have a bolt, because I thought about that idea too, just putting a bolt through here, but I didn't have a bolt that's small enough, long and skinny enough, and also that the head would clear whenever this spun and locked on there. So that's kind of why I ultimately decided to just go ahead and use the rivets. It's super sturdy and actually it's questionably more sturdy than the original one with two rivets. That is actually, very impressive. Those four eighth inch rivets, that should hold perfectly. They hold beautifully. Now we're good to assemble this bottom portion and put it all officially back together. Uh, perfectly clean, but there's a lot of that gunk taken out with a simple paper towel. Just need to make sure the wires internally here are not blocking the holes because these two clip into there, and obviously you don't want to pinch any wires. So I think we are ready to put the case back on. washer only goes on one way little sprocket guy again only goes one way and by far the hardest part of the whole operation is putting back this little snap ring got a couple different screwdrivers and I'm gonna try to pry into this backside hopefully separate it enough 
so I can put this on. Alright, so I got a brand new Ryobi battery, not quite fully charged, but nearly there. I have the brand new Ryobi pole saw, as well as the old one that we just repaired. So, we're going to see if this officially works. We'll take the brand new one. This one is oiled. I definitely learned my lesson. Clearly works. Shot out some remnants of some landscaping from a week ago. Now, same battery with the one we just repaired. Let's go ahead and attach the refurbished portion that you can tell by the rivets down there and the modified Rayobi sticker because, of course, there's two hidden bolts behind there. truth <laughs> I cannot believe that actually worked now I do probably need to adjust the chain a little bit take off some of the tension and I certainly need to fill it up with some oil but that's insane that just goes to show you if you have a broken tool don't necessarily throw it out take a little bit of time some basic tools and a little bit of knowledge, tear it apart, and see what's going on. That's insane. I cannot believe that we're able to actually repair this tool. Now, with that being said, if you have an extended warranty that you paid for with the Ryobi tool system, you may be able to just turn it in and get a full refund or get an exchange. So that's kind of up to you. But for me, I bought it used. I was out the money that I had into it if I couldn't get it working. So there you go. Basic tools, a little bit of time, tear it apart, you can actually replace that blown out fuse. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, you probably should actually replace it with another fuse. It may actually cause more issues in the long run with the motor. But for now, at least I have a working pole saw. Otherwise, it would have gone in the garbage. So if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a giant thumbs up. I do appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to drop a comment down below. And also consider subscribing. I do have plenty of other how-tos mainly automotive stuff, but now that I have a house, I'm getting more into the household stuff and also pool repair, apparently. So I do appreciate you watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.